A very good evening to you all. Welcome to the Extra Mile, an initiative by the Prefects Body of St. Joseph's College, Colombo 10. I am Julian Fernando Pulle, and I will be your host for today's program. The Extra Mile is a project organized to keep the Josephian spirit active amongst students while they are at their homes and physically away from college. It will feature past students in a series of interviews and motivational programs where they will share their experiences growing up at St. Joseph's while also offering some advice to the present Josephians on how to go the extra mile in their school careers. Today I have with me an old boy, well known to many for his ability to have balanced all his commitments at school exceptionally well. He was a student at college since grade one. He represented the first 11 cricket team for three years before he was appointed as the captain for the years 2013 and 2014, while also being able to achieve three A's at his advanced level examination in the commerce stream. Joining us all the way from Sydney, Australia, we warmly welcome Dylan Fernando Pule. Good evening, Aya. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, Julian. Thank you so much for having me. So, uh, yeah, how have you been doing? What's the situation like there? And how have you adapted to this pandemic? Uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking. Um, so, Sydney, as you know, is actually uh, so much better than a lot of other parts of the world um, that are currently affected by COVID. Um, we had a few snap lockdowns whenever the case numbers increased in the community. Um, but apart from that, it was, um, I guess, pretty normal. Um, in terms of work and stuff, we did transition to working from home some time back, so I've had to adapt to the new normal. Um, and I would say the most difficult thing during this pandemic time was not being able to travel back home and visit my family for almost um, about one and a half years now. That's very good to hear. Let's hop right into it then, shall we? Yes, for sure. So, uh, yeah, could you take us back and talk about your days at St. Joseph's? How was it? How was your experience? Um, yeah, it was really good. I really enjoyed my school career, whether it was um, in class or outside. Um, so, obviously, towards the latter part of my school career, I focused a lot on cricket, um, and most of my time was devoted towards the game. Um, actually, the college grounds, it, it brings back a lot of fond memories uh, that I had when I was in school with a lot of my teammates at the time. Um, I also remember back in the day when we were playing for college, we eagerly waited for the big match season to kickstart because that was when um, we actually as a team was in the spotlight and everyone was following our games and you know, all our scores and whatnot. Um, and yeah, on a further note, I think I was really lucky uh, to have some of the best teachers in school at my time in college all the way from grade one, which did um, actually make my stay at St. Joseph's College very memorable. So Aya, you were a student at college since grade one. You achieved exceptional results in your A-level exams. You got three A's and you were the captain of the college cricket team. I can only imagine balancing all these commitments would have been a bit difficult. What are the challenges that you faced along this journey? Um, yeah, so like you said, I guess the biggest challenge for me was managing both um, studies and sports. So there were days I didn't do well at cricket, which uh, that sort of affected my studies and various other activities that I was a part of back in the day. Um, but overall, I guess I'm glad to, um, you know, have had that experience in school because it taught me a lot in terms of how to deal with my failures and also, you know, learn through them and um, succeed in everything else on the way. Yes, sir. Uh, so you mentioned you faced all these sorts of challenges. How did you overcome them? Um, in terms of overcoming them, um, I think being focused, just believing in myself and everything that I did at the time. Um, and also, I must say, um, the support that I got from my family, you know, during the good times as well as the bad times, that was definitely what kept me going on. Yes. Uh... So I you know I can only assume having a strong mindset is a very key factor when it comes to overcoming these challenges. How important is it to you that you? Uh, how important is it to you, the fact 
that you should have a strong mindset? How important is that factor? Yeah, good question. I think it is very important. Um, and as all of you would know, there is a quote that says, once your mindset changes everything, sorry, once you have a strong mindset, it actually changes, you know, everything that comes along with it. Um, so I guess setting a clear goal um, as to what you want to achieve in life and having a positive mindset will definitely help you to succeed and achieve those goals. Um, and, you know, things like family, friends, a healthy lifestyle, all of that contributes towards having a strong mindset. So you earlier mentioned that sometimes failure affected your studies <clears throat> in certain ways. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it would have been a bit difficult, but failure is something all of us have to go through in our life. We can't avoid it. What did failure teach you personally? What is your personal opinion on that? Um, yeah, so failure basically teaches you how to become stronger and how to become, I guess, more determined in order to achieve whatever goals you set in life. Um, and, you know, if the outcome doesn't go your way or doesn't go as expected, I guess you just have to keep fighting and look for ways to overcome all those obstacles and bounce back and, you know, achieve what you want to achieve in life, in other words. Now we all know you were very committed to your sports and studies. It's no secret. We all know that. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of memories you cherish in your time at college, from your time at college. Uh, can you mention a few of those? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So in terms of sports, I would think the significant memories would be when I captained under 15 and we became joint champs. Um, and it was that same year that I ended up captaining the district and provincial teams. Um, so those are definitely good days. Um, and also being able to represent the first 11 cricket team at a very young age. Um, you know, being able to play with a lot of the guys who currently are, you know, part of squads of, uh, you know, Sri Lanka A teams and even the, the main Sri Lanka team. Um, apart from that, I guess winning the 50 over game when I captained the team, that was a very special memory that I do cherish up to date. Um, and studies-wise, I would think, yeah, just the good results that I was able to achieve at O-level and um, A-level exams. So, I, you mentioned about winning the 50-over encounter when you were the captain. Uh, what was that like? How did it feel? Oh, so that was a very surreal experience. Um, I mean, being able to bring back the shield um, to college in front of such a big crowd and also um, to be able to share such an amazing moment with all my teammates um, at the time, my school friends, my teachers, all the old boys. It was just an amazing feeling um, and it will definitely be a memory that I'll cherish forever. So you spent a lot of time on the cricket field, I can assume, in your last year as a captain. You would have been on the cricket field half of the time. Uh, how did you get your focus back towards your studies after all this time on the field? Like, I, I, uh, I know that uh, you had only three months left uh, to study for A-levels after your final season. How did you get your focus back towards studies? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, I guess whenever I was playing cricket, I used to, you know, give my 100% focus and 100% concentration onto the game. Um, and in saying that, you know, at all other times when, whenever I was with my books and whenever I was studying, I used to focus solely on that. Like I never let anything sort of come into my head and, um, I guess disturb me whether it was cricket that I was doing or whether it was, um, studies that I was engaged in. Um, yeah, I used to, you know, just concentrate, focus and, um, really apply myself to whatever I was doing at the time. So throughout this journey, I'm certain there were a lot of individuals who played a part in helping you. Uh, who were some of the people that helped you get through this period? Well, definitely family number one, as you would know, for sure, um, during both good times and bad. Um, apart from family, of course, everyone at school, from my teachers to my friends, um, yeah, to my classmates, to all of them basically played, played a major part in, you know, helping me being who I am today. That's very nice to hear. Yeah? Uh, so <laughs> here's a good question. <laughs> Looking back at your school career, uh, is there anything you would have done differently? 
Um, going to think of it, not too sure if I would have had the time to do something more than what I actually did while I was in school. But um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that I got when I was in school as, as a school boy. Um, and I guess I'm extremely lucky to have been able to be part of such a great school in Sri Lanka. So I don't think I'm really um, disappointed about anything. Uh, speaking about time, that brings us to today's main topic of discussion, balancing extracurricular activities with studies during your school career. Uh, you were an individual who succeeded really well in doing so. Could you give us a brief insight as to how important this aspect is? Um, yeah, so I guess it is very important. Um, you know, life throws you challenges at times where you don't expect it. And I guess it's important to grab these challenges as and when it comes, um, because, you know, you never know what can happen tomorrow. Um, things may not be the same. It may be, you know, very different to what it is currently. Um, so, yeah, when I was at school, you know, being able to juggle around studies and sports and all of that really, I guess, helped me to um, you know, currently apply myself, whether it may be at university or at work, um, and be able to achieve all the targets that I am given, um, meet all the deadlines that I have to, and um, also, you know, have um, extra time to, you know, enjoy life doing, doing things that I love to do. Yes, so when you balance all these commitments, I, I can only assume time management is key. So how, how did you manage your time? How did you do it? How did you get through this? Yeah, I guess it's easier said than done because um, back when I was in school, there used to be practices almost, you know, three to four days a week. And after that, sometimes I've had to come back home and focus on studies. So it wasn't, I guess, a, a smooth journey. It, it, it definitely was very tough, but... Um, as, as I mentioned before, like at the times I was on the field, I used to concentrate on cricket entirely. And at the times I was off the field and with my, with my books, I used to give my 100% commitment towards my studies. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned earlier, again, it's, it's very important that you do relax and give yourself that downtime because that really helps you to perform even better and consistently. So Aya, you were a cricketer at college from grade, from grade five till the year you left school. You would have gained a lot of experiences in your, uh, from your times on, on and off the field with your cricket team. What, mm. what were the experiences in cricket that you gained? What, what, those, what did those experiences teach you when it comes to the real world? Yeah, I guess cricket taught me probably much more than what accounts and statistics did, I must say. Um, I definitely learned to have that never give up attitude and, you know, fight to the end and fight to what you actually want to achieve in life. Um, cricket also taught me about how to accept both winning and losing. Um, also things like how to take risky decisions when, you know, things weren't really going in our favor. Um, and I think most importantly, cricket taught me that nothing in life is permanent. You know, you could have something today that when you wake up tomorrow may not be there and it may be a totally um, different, a, a totally different game. Mm, so you agree that cricket was a key factor in who you are today? Yes, 100%. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, are you a student who obtained exceptional results at A-levels? Uh, being a student who overcame all those challenges when you were a student, after balancing all your sports and your studies, your extracurriculars. Uh, is there any advice you would like to give all the Josephians back at home who are currently going through this new trend of online learning? Um, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I guess staying focused, being dedicated to what you, you know, want to achieve in life, um, having a positive mindset, um, you know, those are all key factors. Um, and in terms of um, the online learning trend, I think that's that's a great experience for everyone back at home because it definitely would 
um, you know, help you once you leave school, once you enter universities, once you enter the workforce, because that basically is the future. Um, so I guess it's it's um, important that everyone um, with arms wide open accepts that opportunity and, um, you know, works towards improving themselves. Um, and I guess my last message would be for everyone to adapt and embrace change as and when it comes. Uh, so I... Uh... What are your thoughts on this new online learning trend, this uh, whole Zoom meeting sort of thing? Um, well, it is something new, um, but you can't really say it's something new now, especially with, you know, COVID. It's, it's sort of become like the new normal, isn't it? So I guess everyone has to, at some point, um, get accustomed or adapt to such changes and, you know, make it a part of their everyday life and be able to, um, I guess, make the most of it. Aya, can you say a few words to the students who are waiting for the upcoming A-level and O-level exams? Um, yeah, so I'm confident that all of you will definitely be putting 100% in at this point in time and preparing for the exams. Um, and now it's just a matter of having faith in yourselves and doing your best. And uh, what do you have to say to all those who missed out on the opportunity to represent school because of lockdown, whether it be sports or in certain academic fields? Uh, so I can't imagine how it must be feeling like to miss out on representing your school during your time as a schoolboy. Um, but I guess at this point in time, it's best that you take the positive out of um, this situation and know that you did experience something um, very tough. Um, and that would have definitely made you stronger um, to face any challenges or disappointments that come your way in the future. And um, in saying that, there's always opportunity to play the sports you love and to do the things you love doing. Even once you leave school, so you are definitely not just restricted to um, not restricted to such activity in your school days. And for today's final question, I'm pretty sure a lot of students have been waiting for you to answer this one. Uh, is there anything you would like to say to the Josephian family in general? Uh, yeah, so firstly, I hope everyone's keeping safe. Um, and I hope everyone is adhering to any of the regulations the government has imposed back at home. Um, I hope all of you are making the most of your time at home with your family, maybe with your mom, your dad, your siblings, whoever it may be. Um, and finally, I hope everyone is embracing change in terms of, you know, whether it may be e-learning, working from home, um, whatever it may be. Hope everyone is um, taking that up as an opportunity and making the most of it. Thank you for that answer. Well, that brings us to the end of today's program. Thank you, Dylan Ayer, once again for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you to everyone who joined today's session of The Extra Mile. We hope that you were able to take away something of value from this program. Join us again next week. And together, let's all find the strength to go the extra mile and get through the challenge together as one Josephian family. Till then, stay safe and God bless you all.